and towards Mount Tarongo. Doctors and nurses with medical supplies, clothing and food were rushed by the Red Cross to the stricken area of Woods Point where many were injured or badly burnt and where all the inhabitants of one outlying settlement were burnt to death. The valley of the Thompson River, the Red Jacket and the Blue Jacket. And in the words of Judge Stretton, for mile upon mile, the former forest monarchs lay in confusion, burnt, torn from the earth, and piled one upon the other as matches strewn by a giant hand. A total of 7,800 square miles invaded by fires and lit some possibly accidentally, others undoubtedly deliberately by the hand of man. And then, salvage operations. The Forests Commission and the timber industry embarked upon the colossal task of salvaging the burnt mountain ash. 1,000 million feet of standing timber to be felled and felled quickly. If left standing for longer than a few years, the timber would deteriorate so rapidly as to be of very little use for sawmilling purposes. With Australia at war and the call for timber and still more timber, the men in the bush worked tirelessly to get the logs out. Every conceivable method of log haulage which ingenuity could devise was resorted to. In very difficult country, the skyline lead was used to haul the logs through the air. Great skill and considerable daring are needed to climb and lop the selected spar trees and attach the rigging and wire ropes. But it's all in a day's work to these men. Once the trees are on the ground, the damp undergrowth preserves the logs for many years. Where they've been hauled into dumps, sometimes containing a million or more logs, these have to be sprayed to keep the wood surfaces moist. To transport this huge volume of fire-killed timber from the bush to the mills, a vast road construction program was necessary. All available road-making equipment was brought into use for the building of hundreds of miles of roads through the burnt over areas. steel tramways. Logging trucks and trailers replaced the slow-moving timber trams. Speed of log handling and flexibility of transport was the only answer to this race against time. And so by the combined efforts of forester and engineer, sawmiller and timber worker, no less than the huge total of 1,300 million super feet of fire-killed timber has been salvaged from the devastated area. Logs of low quality, not suitable for producing sawn timber, are not left to waste on the ground. They are cut into billets and transported to the paper mills the conversion into wood pulp and paper products. Mm -hmm. 
and now, today. The rebuilding of a new forest from the ashes of the old. Natural regeneration where the seed survives. Tedious and costly hand planting where the burnt earth is no longer reproductive. That delicate balance of nature, the green forests and the hills, the fertile plains and the valleys, must and can be restored. The scientific training of the forestry student, on whose shoulders will fall the heavy responsibility of forest development in the future, will go far towards the rebuilding of the areas devastated in the past. The forester of today can do no more than place all his knowledge and experience in the service of the community to supervise and control the harvesting of the timber and to protect the forest in his charge. But all the years of care and vigilance of the communities in the bush, all the organization and training of the forest service, could be again swept aside into another vortex of flame by the careless use of a burning match. The preservation of the forest for generations to come and the safety of those who live and work in them is in your hands and in my hands. By carelessness, we have torn the forests apart. By carefulness, we can put them together again. Thank you.